good afternoon. Um, I am Lou Ogden, and I have the distinct um, honor and privilege to serve as the mayor in Tualatin. And I also um, am proud to say that I, I've been a member of the Tualatin Chamber for close to 20 years and uh, been on the board of directors for most of that period of time. So uh, it's, it's a great, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to, to do the State of the City annually here at the Chamber Luncheon. There's been a close partnership between the city of Tualatin, the city government in Tualatin, and the Tualatin Chamber of Commerce that goes back for decades. And that working relationship um, has been great and gets stronger every year. Uh, and is by evidence by the fact that uh, Councillor Ed Truax, also a member of the Tualatin Chamber. And so um, we are really joined um, both at the hip and at, at the community level. If, if, you, if I think of a word that describes the state of the city, I would use the word secure. Um, we realize that these are difficult, challenging times economically um, throughout the world, and certainly in our region and in our community, but in the city of Tualatin, both at the city government level, and I believe at the community level broadly, we are secure, and yet we're vigilant, we're concerned, and we're, we're watching the future, um, we believe, in a responsible manner. Let me start with just having some fun and talking about some of the highlights of this past year and go through them sort of um, with a little bit of a visual chronicle. Of course, the exciting piece of Tualatin downtown today is the Tualatin Library. We had the grand opening this year. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, we also had the long-awaited, finally, the, the grand opening and the beginning of service of the West Side Express commuter rail. We revisited the past. Um, after, I believe, about a quarter of a century, we re-implemented a municipal court in Tualatin, and that's going on actively. Tualatin tomorrow, we had our first annual review, if you will, uh, that is town hall report to the community, and I will talk more about that, and also the success that we've had with our lead partners, um, and this exemplifies it there by Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue, actually, the Crawfish Festival Parade. And of course, the Heritage Center, it's always fun to talk about that, and I will talk more about that later on. Um, but of course, the patio, the latest addition to that facility, I think everyone here in this room had a part of that. I know the chamber uses that facility both in and out from the standpoint of, uh, of, of a meeting place, and so the patio was a great addition. And finally, the Meridian Marker, a very unique celebration we had this year uh, through the Historical Society and actually a grant to build this marker to mark the, um, and I won't get the right survey term, but the, um, the center uh, post where basically the entire Northwest all the way down to San Francisco was laid out from. And that is on Meridian Road, which is um, um, at 65th Street in Tualatin. And if you haven't seen that, that's a real fun and very educational and a very important part of our heritage that uh, was uh, um, commemorated this year. So to all of them by the numbers, so let me move through some quickly, just to give you some background. Um, we are now a year older than we were last year. Um, uh, founded in 1913. Population, um, the story is, is well told. From the 70s to the 80s, the population increased tenfold. In the 80s, it doubled. In the 90s, it went up by um, about 50%. And in this decade, we anticipate an increase of about 25% over the course of the decade. I'll talk more about that later as well. Uh, the tax rate, the permanent tax rate for 12 is $2, a little over two and a quarter per thousand, plus our outstanding bonds. And if you look around the neighborhood, that's a pretty good deal um, relative to other cities. And we believe that at a cost-effective manner, uh, we provide pretty good service. And the service we provide is the service that our community tells us to provide. Um, so that translates really into an operating budget of almost $97 million. Interesting to note, and I'll see if I can do this with the mouse here, the general fund, which is what you normally think of as the operations of um, the library, police, um, the administration, is um, certainly less than 20% of our total budget. The vast majority of the budget um, are operating funds and capital expenditures. So water bills, sewer bills, um, development fees, that sort of thing. Um, and also that tax rate, the property tax, out of $97 million, actually is about six, just under $6 million, or about equivalent to our police budget. So it's not all just about taxes. In fact, a very small portion of it. 
But fiscal accountability is important. In fact, um, our, our um, finance department has received this award annually for 17 consecutive years. That, you could say that's something to boast about, but really, we believe that's the minimum standard. When you're talking about the public's dollars, you have to be right 100% of the time. Just a quick uh, layout of, of the community. We're about 5,000 acres. About half of that is commercial and industrial. The other half is residential. About 10 million square feet of industrial under roof, um, a million plus of office, about 3 million retail. Uh, we saw the population numbers. We were around 25,000. We have around 23,000 workers, uh, jobs. Um, hopefully, that's still a relatively strong number. Um, but it's a balanced community, both in terms of the square footage, if you will, or the acreage, in terms of re residential compared to commercial and industrial, and jobs compared to population. And we have a little over 10,000 dwelling units. There is still some undeveloped area in Tualatin, and that may change in a big way in the future. We have 77 miles of street. We have um, nine miles of county roads, which is basically Tualatin, Sherwood Road, and Borland Road on the east side, five miles of, of uh, State Highway, which ha happens to be I-5. We have 11 parks, over 100 acres of parks, over 100 acres of greenways, natural areas. Um, though the economy has been struggling, um, Tualatin last year actually had an increase in valuation, um, and that's largely due to the additional construction that was in process and even continued and in new even construction. Um, private investment, uh, $37 million of new value in the commercial side under uh, construction, some examples, shops at Bridgeport. Talk more about the election development in a moment. They actually, we actually drew about 1,200 permits, did almost 4,000 inspections, and the project value from those permits um, is something in the neighborhood of $68 million. So we are secure in this community. Things aren't as rosy as they always have been, but certainly, we're, you know, this, we're not in the doldrums. And development continues. You see the Grand Phoenix Hotel, just other examples of projects underway. The election at Bridgeport, uh, that is going to be a fantastic facility. It's, um, uh, I don't remember, help me, Ed, if you recall, a couple hundred dwelling units, maybe 300 dwelling units. Um, it has mixed use. It'll have commercial on the lower level, retail. Um, it, it will have structured parking. 400 units. 508 total units for someone who can read. Thank you. Uh, but, it, but it's a class development. And it's, um, if you don't know where it's located, it's over in the old Schneider Trucking um, facility on, on or that, that site on uh, Boone's Ferry Road, Lower Boone's Ferry, kind of across from Providence Medical Center. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we had, again, the grand opening of the commuter rail, um, nearly 20 years coming. Uh, using an existing railway, an existing right-of-way, um, a, a largely unused right-of-way. You'll notice the, um, the station, of course you've all seen that, but the Tualatin station looks different than the other stations. That's indicative again of our interest in maintaining that continuity of quality um, of sort of upper scale development. I want to thank the chamber for participating the, that week um, and when Wes's uh, grand opening occurred, you were there with Booz and uh, we appreciate that. Um, with the train comes train whistles. So you may have heard the whistles. You may have heard a little bit about the whistles. Uh, this is a map of Tualatin, the yellow boundary. The red line is the commuter rail line. And we have actually eight crossings through town. And if you count the one down in Tonkin, um, we are concerned about the noise impacts. Uh, we are investigating and in the process of trying to implement some various mitigation options, uh, one of which would be a quiet zone where uh, for some or maybe all of the crossings, the train wouldn't blow its whistle. Another option are stationary horns. We're actually doing a trial of those in a couple weeks. And I hope it's nothing serious, guys. I was going to talk about you later, so come back if you can. Um, and so, so we understand it's a concern. We understand it's an issue. We believe that there are solutions available, and we, we are working forward in that direction. And just, just so you know, um, um, I, our entire congressional delegation, delegation in Washington is aware of this. They're supportive. Um, we're looking at stimulus money, different ways to try to bait the issue. I-599 connector project, um, been going on for years. The study basically wrapped up this, uh, some, this fall, this winter, 
uh, with a general agreement on Alternative 7, which, in a long, long story short, instead of a, we concluded that instead of a, a freeway type of, of um, expansive project across the south between 99W and I-5, uh, there wasn't probably funding, nor was there probably political will to make that happen. Um, but more likely, the solution lies in improving major arterials and particularly building a 124th extension south out of Tualatin, hooking up with a west extension down to I-5, and then connecting to the south uh, through a corridor with Sherwood. These are major arterial kinds of roads. Think a Roy Rogers kind of road. Um, obviously, there are concerns on overloading I-5, particularly concerns in the city of Wilsonville, and we're going to work through those. Uh, we're going to come to a conclusion. So what is next on that? Well, I believe the immediate next for us is extending 124th Avenue down to Tonkin Road, improving Tonkin Road over to Boone's Ferry, making that connection to I-5, amending the regional transportation plan and pursuing federal funding to make that happen. We've already initiated that. I was in Washington a couple weeks ago um, giving a packet on 124th to all of our delegation. And so what does that look like? Well, again, here's Tualatin, the red boundary, this time it's in the yellow. 124th is built today from 99W down to Tualatin Sherwood Road. That was built 100% by the city of Tualatin. That's a four-lane divided parkway kind of arterial. Um, and it goes down to Tualatin Sherwood Road, as I said. That needs to extend south, in my opinion. Um, this area here is the Tigard Sand and Gravel area. It is inside the urban growth boundary. It's not inside the city as of yet, but it would extend south along that, connecting up to Tonkin, as I said. I mentioned that um, we just extended it to 12th and Sherwood Road under construction, and there's a ribbon cutting just earlier this month, actually. So when you stand there, you can look and see south where that road needs to go. Uh, again, this is simply a concept plan of Tualatin, I'm sorry, Tiger Sand and Gravel, should be Tualatin Sand and Gravel. Um, and this is how that might develop in the future. Uh, but again, 124th coming down. And that's what we're trying to pursue at this point. I mentioned the Tualatin Library. Gosh, what a facility. Um, the, the bond measure was passed, I believe, in 2003. Um, it took us a while to, to actually make that happen in the dirt. But uh, a beautiful facility on the inside, not just from a library standpoint, but from a community gathering standpoint. We're complete with an espresso stand. And that's sort of the city of Tualatin coffee clash, if you will, um, a, a community gathering place. And it's being used that way. Um, the art in, inside is fantastic. The uh, preservation and, and presentation of the mammoth, uh, or of the mastodon, um, just, I'm sure you've all been in there, but if you haven't, you need to get in and see that. Um, but let's talk about some numbers. Um, this is, since the new library was, went into, um, opened up last year, last, last summer, and we, in 2008, lent out a half a million items. Um, that's over 1,500 items per day. Uh, we, per capita, turn more than anyone else in the system. Uh, we had uh, almost 200,000 visits which equates to maybe 600 people a day. Roughly the population of Tualatin going through the library doors every month or thereabouts, maybe every five weeks. Fantastic story. Uh, number of programs that we do in the library. I, don't, I didn't know, by the way, that kids' programs involve kissing snakes, but apparently that's a new way of adaptation. Um, what are some of the community enhancement projects that we've done in Tualatin this year? We've done it in two ways. One is with um, actual in-the-dirt work the reverse frontage program, which is not new, is actually started in 2005. We increased the monthly maintenance fee that you pay from 50 cents to $2. I, I think most folks feel that's a, a wise investment. And it's, a, in essence, a beautification program. It addresses the, the issue of where, uh, and which is a, a, a very common um, subdivision design here in Tualatin, where a number of houses, their backyards back up to the street and then there's a fence and so that median though it's private, that even though it's uh, privately owned, really isn't privately maintained. So we just began doing that, doing plannings, um, doing maintenance on Boone's Ferry, Cherry Lane, other areas. Um, and that's been a big, big hit I think with most folks. Infrastructure projects are underway, probably the most significant of which is Herman Road. Herman Road is being widened and improved from in essence 124th on the west, on the east, on the west to uh, Teton Road, and there will be a rebuild of that intersection at Teton and Herman. Um, this year we will do an extension on Leventon Drive, so it goes west past 124th, and we'll eventually hook up to 99W, open up the rest of that area for industrial development. You know, you, know, you 
try as we as we do our best